in magic, because my June bullet journal theme is a little magical. Hello, it's Erin, and for the next 20 minutes or so, let's pretend magic is real. These pearl watercolours are really the basis of this theme. I've used it to mix some pink, purple, green, and blue colours that I'll be using all the way throughout this setup to create these soft and whimsical cloud formations. I don't have a great deal of skill with watercolour, which is why I love using them in this way. It's very easy, you just swirl your brush in little circles and blend the colours into each other wherever they meet. Also, there are no rules about the different shapes that clouds can be, so they can really be whatever shape comes out. The spread we're working on here is my June cover spread, with space for a big June heading on the right page and a quote on the left. If you've been following along from my last Plan With Me video for May, you'll know that that one had a fairy theme, so I guess you could say I'm feeling quite fantastical lately. I have been reading a lot more fantasy novels than usual, and I think it would be quite safe to say that this layout was inspired a little bit by The Court of Dreams from the A Court of Thorns and Roses series. Not that I think it would look necessarily anything like this, but just the idea of a castle in the sky, a court of dreams, I think they overlap somewhat. When working with watercolour in your bullet journal, unless you're using one of those amazing journals that's made with watercolour paper, you're going to want to use as little water on the page as possible. My notebook is from Sassy Pigeon HQ and it has beautiful 160 GSM pages, so the watercolour doesn't bleed through to the page behind, but it does warp the page a little bit. You can see it particularly along the top at the moment in the areas where most of the water touched the page. It will flatten out a little bit as it dries, but it will never be completely flat the way it was before you put water on the page again, so if you think that would bother you, maybe steer clear of watercolour, or do your artwork on a separate piece of paper and then stick it into your journal instead. My theme last month was quite busy and maximalist, so I wanted this month to be much more minimal and serene. I'm going to let the watercolour do most of the heavy lifting as far as decoration and just add a few little sticker accents here and there, as well as a little bit of washi tape. For all of my lettering in this theme, I'm using this Pentel brush sign pen in the colour light grey. And I'm starting on the quote page on the left side, with a wonderful whimsical quote from the Prince of Paradox, G.K. Chesterton. This quote says, There are no rules of architecture for a castle in the clouds. Dot grid pages are fantastic for setting out quotes in a way that looks really beautiful and balanced, because you can use the spaces and the dots to make sure that each letter is evenly spaced from the one next to it. I'm lettering the words architecture, castle, and clouds in a lovely flowing script font, and I'll be lettering the other words with an 08 Sakura Pigma Micron for a bit of a bolder line in a much simpler sans serif font. For my June cover page lettering, I've used, as a reference, Harmony from Joy Letters Bujo's June 2022 cover spread. Her lettering is everything I hope mine will be one day. I'll keep working towards that. I always set everything out in pencil first, so erasers are a must. And these gorgeous whimsical castle stickers are from a set from Journal Say. It also has some lovely curtained doorways and stained glass windows that I'll be using on subsequent spreads. And it's a little tricky to see in this light, but these stickers also have a beautiful iridescent reflection. The watercolour paint also has a subtle pearlescent shimmer, so together they shine and sparkle in the light. Let's move on to my monthly log or calendar setup. This spread goes by many names, but its function is very straightforward. It's a calendar space to write any events, tasks, and reminders that I need for the month ahead. I'm using a very light hand and not completely touching the page all the way across as I draw these lines to give my lines a soft, slightly unfinished feeling, like maybe they could be floating in the clouds as well. 
The O3 Sakura Pigma Micron pen that I'm using to make these lines is also kind of on its last legs, so it's quite easy to achieve this broken line look with a pen that has its nib a little damaged and maybe the ink starting to run out just a touch. I like to start my weeks on Mondays, so I have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday spaces on the left side, and Friday, Saturday and Sunday on the right side of the page. This is the Tombow Jewel Brush Pen in the colour 623 Purple Sage, which I'll be using every time a calendar needs a little accent of colour. Now it's time to add more of those beautiful swirling watercolour clouds. And while we paint those, I wanted to tell you about some news that I have. Just this week I have launched channel memberships here on my YouTube channel. If you have a look below the video, near my name and the subscribe button, you'll now see a join button. If you join my channel as a member, you'll pay a small monthly fee in exchange for some perks. There are two membership levels, the first is called Remarkable Markers, it's $1.49 Australian per month, which works out to about $1 US per month. If you sign up as a Remarkable Marker, you'll have a loyalty badge next to your name in comments and live chats, you'll have access to four custom emojis modelled after my precious baby Mitsu cat which you can also use in comments and live chat here on my channel, and you'll also have access to members only photo and status updates on my YouTube community page. I'll be using those to give some behind the scenes insight into my journaling processes, and also sometimes to share access to free printables as well. The second tier is called Handlettered Heroes, it is $4.99 a month Australian, which right now is about $3.49 US. It includes all of the perks I mentioned already for the Remarkable Markers, as well as early access to new videos, members-only polls on my community page, and also a monthly members-only live stream. At the moment, I'm thinking we'll use that monthly live stream time together to plan out the layout for the upcoming month and mood board some ideas for the theme together as well. Of course, channel membership is completely optional, but if it sounds like something you might be interested in, your support means the world to me and I appreciate it so, so much. I've been finding placing the stickers in this theme quite difficult because I want them to always stand out a little bit from the watercolor, so I don't typically want them to be completely over the top of the watercolor sections, but at the same time, I don't want them to stay too far outside of those boundaries either. I actually ended up deciding right at the end when I'd finished all of the pages to go back in and add a little bit of this beautiful washi tape. So I have bent the timeline a little bit to show you this part. This washi tape is from the Dreamland set from the washi tape shop and it is stunning. It has silver gilding, beautiful lilac tones, and it is the perfect complement to this theme. I'm mixing up my internal pages a little bit this month rather than having a mood tracker and my usual goals, favorites and musings page, I've decided to nix the musings and favorites section this time as well as the mood tracker and just go with habits and goals. I've split the habit tracker in half so that it can go on the top section of this page with days 1 through 15 at the top and days 16 until 30 on the bottom. June is a good month for this because it has an even number of days, which makes this kind of layout look much more satisfying than an odd number. Then I'm continuing my watercolour clouds all the way across the bottom of this page and onto the next page as well. I wanted to make sure my headings were perfectly centered, so I'm using my grid spacing ruler as a guide to make sure that I can have those center letters in exactly the right place. 
You can see me set this up in my 2023 plan with me video, but I actually borrowed the idea from Tracy Tyler Revel and her original video is much more informative than mine, so I'll make sure it's linked in the description for you in case you'd like to see. The next page will be for one line a day, which is not an unusual concept, but I've put my own twist on it. Just like I did in May, this is going to be one line each day of a poem. It was very much inspired by Livia J, known as A Brighter Spark on Instagram, who posts beautiful poetry every day. Livia's escape roll and Napa Remo challenges really inspired me to move back towards poetry, which is something I used to really enjoy. So this is my way of dipping my toe back into writing some poetry in a very low pressure, yet bullet journal incorporating kind of way. I'm trying not to put any pressure on myself to make it a good poem, just a poem. And at the moment, I'm not using any kind of meter or structure or form. I'm just kind of going with whatever feels good in the moment. Now let's add some stickers. You will see me doing a lot of auditioning of stickers in this layout while I try to decide where is the best place to put things. I'm using the vertical space on the right side of the one line a day page to add the heading there. And then this spread is complete. Once I added the washi tape to the calendar page, I knew I needed to incorporate it in a few other places around the design as well, otherwise it would feel a little out of place if it only appeared on one spread. So I've decided to add a little on either side of the habit tracker here, and I love tearing my washi tape in two in order to make it fit a space and have a nice soft torn edge as well. The next two pages are quite utilitarian, but I find them to be essential ones for me. On the left will be my spending tracker for the month, and on the right will be my meal planner. I'm approaching this with the same decoration ideas as the previous spread, because it allows a lot of space for planning and tracking on the page, which is obviously the point of the journal, while still keeping cohesive with the theme all the way through the month. Anyone who's been watching my channel for a while is likely bored to tears by my spending log layout, but it still works for me, so I still continue to never change it. In this instance, it will appear like one table, but it's actually two, with no gap in between. The table has three columns, one for item, one for cost, and one for category, and it's repeated on the right side as well. Each time I make a purchase, I write down what it was, I assign it to a category, and I record how much it cost, and at the end of the month I tally everything up by category, and transfer everything over into my overall cash flow tracker at the very beginning of my journal. This way I can see very clearly where the trends are in my spending, and where I might be able to cut back and save a little bit more money. And I can also compare to previous years, because I've been doing this for quite some time now. On the right page is my meal planner, which I introduced for the first time ever in May, and I found it really helpful, but also because it was my first time ever using a meal planning spread, I found a lot of flaws in last month's layout, so I've adapted this one to be a little more functional and useful, which is absolutely my favorite thing about the bullet journal method, is being able to change things to make them work better, and learning and growing and improving on your journal with each new iteration. This time I've given myself a lot more space to write down the meals I plan to eat for each day, and I've also included an extra box at the bottom of the page to be my shopping list. I'm the kind of person who's pretty happy to eat the same thing over and over again, so at the moment I'm working on kind of a week A, week B alternating roster for my meals, which means I can also make a week A and week B shopping list, which is very convenient and useful. I'll be very interested to see how this page changes again moving into next month. I'd been planning to leave these pages here, but it felt like there was a little too much negative space at the top, and because my stickers have been tied to the clouds on every page so far, I felt like maybe clouds rather than some random floating stickers made more sense here. So I've jumped back in with my watercolors one more time, 
and I'm being careful to keep the watercolour away from the lettering by a small margin just so that they don't interfere and fight with each other. I hadn't left a space for a heading for the shopping list so I'm just adding a stripe of purple down the side to add that text on top. The next spread is for my content planner. I like to schedule as much of my content in advance as I can, especially across Instagram but also here on YouTube wherever possible. I also keep a couple of blogs running so it's good to have all of that planned out in advance and even if it isn't pre-scheduled and the work already done, I know what needs to be done and when. I have a whole system for how this works with colour coding and using it in tandem with apps to schedule my posts. So. If you'd like to see me using this content planner spread in a how-to instructional kind of video, let me know in the comments down below. Can you guess how I plan to decorate this spread? If you're thinking more of my pearlescent pastel clouds, you're absolutely correct. At this point, I'm starting to run out of those iridescent stickers, which is a little bit of a worry. I only have one more spread left for this video, but I do like to live stream my weekly setups throughout the month as well, and it's possible I might need to switch to a different sticker set for some of those. I will definitely have run out of the castles, but I have some similar kind of bottles with leaves with that same iridescent kind of reflection, so if you'd like to see those, make sure that you tune in to my monthly live streams and we can do some real-time planning together. Only one spread left for this setup that is my very first weekly for the month of June and I've taken my inspiration for this weekly from Mahela from Bloom and Dot on Instagram. This weekly has four short boxes along the top, four short boxes along the bottom of the spread and leaves a little bit of space in the middle for decoration. Mahela's had beautiful watercolour florals but mine is going to have, you guessed it, watercolour clouds. I've been deliberately trying not to use my letter stamps for this setup because I feel like I've been relying on them a lot for most of this year and I wanted to get back to hand lettering and Mitsu agrees, he's here saying, Mum, you said you weren't going to use the stamps, why are you using the stamps? But the letters and numbers on this spread are quite a small and subtle detail, so I figured I could get away with it just for this one. Also, I make my own rules so I can break them when I want to. If we can decide that magic is real for this layout, then we can also decide to use letter stamps just on one spread. I left the bottom of the boxes open until I had the stamps down and then I'm adding my lines around them, just leaving a little bit of a gap on either side so the number isn't interrupted by the box. Then of course, it's time to add watercolour.
balancing the colors of the stickers with the colors of the clouds can be a little bit tricky I'm finding with this layout. You don't want to put a blue castle on a blue piece of cloud because then you won't be able to see it. Also, when you're working with watercolor, the moment the sticker touches the paper, if it's over an area of watercolor on the page, it's committed. That's where the sticker has to go because you don't want to risk peeling up the sticker, tearing the page and removing the watercolor in the process. Adding water to a damaged page is a recipe for disaster in a bullet journal. Either the page will rip or the color will seep through to the other side and ruin the spread that's on the other side. So it's just something to keep in mind. Again, I felt like the spread was a little too bare, so I'm tearing up some more of that same washi tape to line the top and bottom edges of the page. This was actually the first time I used the washi tape in the entire setup, and then once I saw it on the page, I decided I wanted to go back through and add it to the previous pages. So you've just time traveled a little bit just by watching this video. See, I told you magic was real. I think this weekly spread ended up being my favorite out of the whole setup. And with that, I'm all set to plan my magical June. Thank you so much for planning with me. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up down below if you did enjoy watching. And if you haven't subscribed yet, feel free to join my bullet journaling family here on YouTube too. I'd love to have you. If you'd like to join me for my weekly spread live streams, don't forget to turn on notifications for the channel, or you can follow me on Instagram because I always post about them on my stories there too. See you on a live or on another video next week. And keep believing in magic. Bye.